to remind you how you were wronged by this world. What? On February 21st, Atlas dropped a bomb on Mega Ten fans with the announcement of Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance. This is a re-release of the 2021 game and it aims to address a lot of the issues from the base game, alongside adding a plethora of new content, which with how much stuff was teased, adds up to over 80 plus hours of new content. Damn! Now the existence of this re-release was rumored back in 2023 from a hacker known for accurately teasing announcements like Armored Core 6, the new game plus for God of War Ragnarok, and a couple other releases. And for the most part, fans that had taken it with a grain of salt, but were mostly excited for the prospect of a re-release. But in what might just be the funniest, yet most Atlas shit to happen, the Korean Game Rating and Administration Committee posted a listing which basically revealed the existence for Vengeance. And man, I feel bad for Atlas, because they clearly ain't got this leaking shit under control and it came literally two days two days before the nintendo direct stream granted this one wasn't solely on them but i still feel bad regardless though fans have been extremely excited for these past few days about this announcement and i wanted to jump on the bandwagon and share my thoughts and opinions about this re-release now i could easily end this video like let's fucking go but i do also have some concerns that i'll sprinkle in throughout the video so without further ado, how am I feeling about this re-release? Let's fucking go! All right, so let me get this out of the way real quick and say that I really like SMT5, but I am consciously optimistic about this re-release. Now, when I first got it back in 2021, I played through like the first hour and a half of it, and then I didn't touch it until like three or four months later. And if I had to give you a reason why at the top of my head, uh... It will be the fact that this story was really disappointing to me. To be honest, that's what most people said about this game. Though based on the trailers and that little spotlight video we got, there seems to be a whole lot of issues that this re-release is trying to address. Hell, the whole reason why this exists in the first place is because of the team's desire to add in things that they weren't able to before. Which, oddly enough, confirms a gut feeling I had with this game, being that they're supposed to have more stuff in it, but it couldn't be implemented for whatever reason. Now, easily the highlight of this announcement is the story, which is now split up between two routes that you could choose at the beginning of the game. Now, you could play the original route or play the new route, which is similar to the original, but slowly changes into its own thing as you progress. And that second route is leaving me curious to see what exactly is going to be changed with the story and what they're going to do. Because based on what we've seen so far, uh, it looks like a story that's based around revenge and it will have some of the characters from the original do a lot more and for now we don't know what exactly is going to be seen but from my guess and my interpretation of things we might be able to see the full extent of Sohori's revenge against those who tormented her which I'm actually looking forward to too it was one of those storylines I felt like was good but could have used more development more oomph to it if you know what I mean and also another thing that I noticed as well is that things might be getting darker though that's only based on that scene where the demon dog just pops up as it starts murking everybody though we'll see what exactly they're going to do with that I'm also digging the Kaditsu and their leader Lilith who's looking to be the antagonistic force of this story I feel like really needed Hell, I think this might be the first mainline game where Lilith is actually the antagonistic force instead of being a sidekick to one. I think. I, I think I might need to replay SMT1 just, just to make sure. And an Atlas re-release wouldn't be one without a new female character. And in this case, we have Yoko Hiromine, who not only looks badass, but also looks eerily similar to another Atlas character. Maybe it's just a coincidence? There is no way that's just a damn coincidence. 
Next is the gameplay, which is full of neat improvements slash additions. For the most part, the improvements made are to make things less annoying for the player, like an enhanced auto battle system, being able to save anywhere you want now, and the ability to use growth items in batches instead of individually. Then comes the additions, which are pretty cool for the most part. One of these features includes an item that gives the player the ability to reallocate their stats, which is neat for when you want to try a different build. And another one has it where almost all demons have a unique skill that's separate from their skill level. And of course, there's new demons that are going to be added to this game. And that kind of leads me to this particular question. Uh, why the hell are we just now getting a new Jack Frost form? And this actually confused the fuck out of me for a while, because it was literally right there. I feel like they could have added Naho Biho in the base game. Yes, that's his actual name, and it's fucking genius. But we finally got it for the re-release, and like always, that boy's clean with it. Now, the spotlight and trailer ended up highlighting two new features that we don't really know much about right now, but it is looking to make battles a little bit more interesting. The first feature mentioned is the ability to basically have demon team ups. By having certain demons in the party, you can use their exclusive moves to deal some damage towards enemies. And so far, we've only seen like two examples of this, and while we won't learn more about this until later on, I am interested to see just how much this would change the battles. The final feature is speculative, but if what we saw is true, it could be the return of something that we hadn't seen since like what? SMT if, and that's the possibility of human party members making a return. Now in the trailer, we quickly saw a controllable Yoko, and that shit left me wondering how this game would handle it. And like, I'm personally hoping for the ability to control human party members and have that extra bit of variety to the game. It might just be the case where it's like, okay, uh, your party members are controlled by AI, just like how it was in SST4 and 4 Apocalypse. Though, again, I would love to have controllable party members, but we won't know until we get the inevitable gameplay trick. Trailer. Hopefully. Now, before we end the video, there are a couple other things that the trailer brought up that I want to mention real quick. And the most obvious out of all of them is the fact that this game is coming to all major platforms, which I am really happy about. Now, more people can have the chance of playing this on their preferred consoles, and I don't have to hear any more bitching about the Switch version because. Oh my god, Jesus, we know the Switch isn't powerful. Christ, what the fuck was y'all expecting anyway? This thing to run like a freaking PC or something? Hey, sorry, real quick. I just want to let this be known real quick uh, before we continue on with the video. So I'm not fighting for my life in the comment section once I upload this shit. So listen, I'm defending the Switch, not because I'm a Nintendo fanboy. First of all, these fuckers are annoying. And despite my love for this console, bless his heart, it's it has its fucking problems. Uh, the main reason why I'm defending it is because I am sick of hearing the same shit for the past five years about how this console is not that powerful. Like, yes, we know it's not powerful. If you went and bought this console expecting it to run like an Xbox One or Xbox Series console on steroids, first of all, you're fucking misguided. Two, um, uh, let's just keep with the misguided one and uh, yeah. And it's also very annoying to hear the same amount of discourse, especially when you're in certain communities and stuff, like hearing the same shit about Persona, hearing the same shit about game discourse. It's a little annoying. And it's almost like you have an abusive relationship with you. What you should do, you should cut that shit off. Or just step outside and touch some fucking grass or something. Anyway. <laughs> Another thing that was mentioned was the link for this game, and oh my god. For context, the length of SMT5 is about 46 hours, with it being slightly shorter or longer depending on if you do the side content. Now, compare this to Vengeance, where the devs stated that both the original and new routes is slated to be over 160 hours. Basically, 80 hours for each route. Now, I'm not surprised that the new route is going to be long, but I want to know just how much new shit is going to be added to the original route beyond the new quests being added, because god damn, this is going to be one hell of a commitment. And knowing my black ass is just how much I love to explore in games, uh, uh, safe to say my hard drive is not going to be very happy about this when I record Vengeance eventually. Well, regardless of just how much stuff is going to be added, I just hope that this ends up being good. Despite everyone saying that this game is mid, I really like my time with SCT-5, and I can only hope that this re-release changes people's opinions about this game. And most importantly, I hope it can make a way better story than the original. Now, with that said, if you guys are interested in getting the game, it's available for all major platforms, and pre-orders are live at the time of me recording this video. And as for the date, SCT-5 Vengeance releases on June 21st, 2024 the same day as the Elden Ring DLC.
Now, if you guys are getting Vengeance, let me know down in the comments below what version you're going to get and your thoughts and opinions on it. I would love to hear from you guys what you think about this re-release. Though, uh, more specifically for the new viewers, and uh, this as a pre-precaution, if you are going to comment down below and you do want to start like a constructive argument about certain things, please keep it civil in the comments. That's all I'm asking, because I don't want to have to deal with all that negativity seeing that amount of arguments in my comment section down below because lord knows i don't want to deal with that shit i don't think anyone wants to deal with it so of course you know keep the keep it all positive yeah <laughs> and with that thank you guys so much for watching till the end of the video like always make sure to like comment subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video hit the bell notification so you guys know when the next video is going to be coming out and make sure to stay safe wear a mask it's getting crazy out there treat each other very well and i'll see you guys in the next video Peace.